But it's not time to look and see what God is doing. Because as long as we're wanderers, we're wanderers. Hey. Oh, I didn't hear no one, no one didn't get one amen on that. As long as we wonder about what God's going to do, we're always going to wonder where he's going and what he's doing. Amen. We're always going to stop and get distracted and question what God really wants for our lives. You see, as long as we wonder and have an idea and not a clarity of what God has for our lives, we're always going to be going here and there. But when you know that you know that there's a plan over your life and you want clarity on what He's doing, you stay the path. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, look at your neighbor. Say, stay the path. Stay the path. No matter how rocky it gets, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how confusing it can be, sometimes we gotta learn how to stay in the path and the plan of God. Can I get an amen? It's time to walk out that goodness. It's time to walk with what God has given us. Many times we come to God and He sets us free, but that's just the beginning. Amen. You see, freedom in Christ is the beginning of your walk in the glory cloud that God wants you to walk in. Amen. You see, the, the original plan, we see Adam, he walked with God. Amen. Many believers today go after God. Amen. Oh, I missed you because we talk about going after God, and, and it's a good thing that we must go after God, but many times we're playing the chase game with God. Oh. We have, we have mastered going after God and looking at his back, but we haven't learned yet how to walk beside him. Amen. Amen. You see, we have the power by the Spirit of God that dwells within our hearts to not only just kind of hear about God, but know exactly what he's up to. We always say things like, God's ways are higher than my ways. Hey. Hey. Who can understand the ways of God? Look at your name and say, neighbor. Hey, that was an old covenant. That was an old covenant. You see, we have the right to know exactly what God is up to. Amen. You see, why, why do we know? Because the Bible says that we have been given the mind of Christ. Amen. The thoughts, the ideas, the heart of God. We have, it's been given to the believers so they can walk out exactly what God is doing. Amen. See, but many times we've been taught to stay on the back end. But I believe what God is doing is that he's, he, he's making an appointment with you to accelerate you to get to a place where you not only wonder about God, but you know him. Amen. You see, I, I talk to a lot of people every day. And, 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 and I look at people, I say, brother, you don't got to believe me, but you can't convince me that it's not real. Amen. See, because I can look at you in your eyes and tell you that my God is good. And my God is faithful. And he was there when no one was there. or the gift of God or, or the very uh, treasure of God is time to come alive in it. You see, the reality is, is that we've been designed with an intention and with a purpose. Amen. You see, many times in this life, one of the tools that the enemy uses is that it's our own insecurity against us. Yes, sir. Well, we see ourselves in the mirror to be the way we once were and our past of what we've gone through. But the reality is, is that God designed you with an intention and with a purpose. And even though you haven't been, or I haven't been living in that exact purpose and that exact intention, it's still alive. Amen. See, when I was drug bound, my purpose was still alive. Amen. When I was in the streets doing what I wanted to do, my purpose and my intention was still alive. I had just not found it yet. Or should I say, I have not dug it up yet. Come on. There's people that have the similarities, people that can kind of compare to you, but the reality is that there's not one person like you. This is why the face ID on the, on the iPhones work really good. Because there's no one like you. The finger, to, to the, the finger call, right? We, we get our iPhones and we can put our fingers and it opens up our phone and we can trust the why? Because there's no one with your fingerprint. Come on. Because you've been designed and intended by God intentionally and specifically exactly the way you are and he didn't make a replica. Come on. Because God is so big that he needed every single child on earth to express himself. Come on. That God put an expression of himself in you yeah. on your release me. You see, salvation, we learn on Sunday that it's the gift of God that we have to walk out. Come on. To walk out our salvation, to work it, and to be saved in Christ means to come into the complete intention, to come to the original design of what God had for us. Yes. And the reason why it's difficult is because we've been shaped and formed by this reality. Yes. 
That's why if you go to Walmart and you're in the cashier and you start speaking in tongues, they're gonna think you're doing witchcraft on them. They're gonna look at you like you're crazy. They're not gonna understand you. Why? Because they're of this world and you're of that world. Yeah. Like you can you can be at work and you can be like, I just saw the Holy Ghost, and everyone's gonna look at you crazy. That's right. That's right. They're not gonna look at you normal. Come on. Trust me, I've been there. What's wrong with this guy right here? Why? Because you're from somewhere else. Yeah, See, but the battle is that most of us want to want the glory of that world when we want the natural uh, 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 desires or the natural uh, tendencies of this world. Come on. We want to experience God's glory. We want to live like a demon on earth. But the sea covers everything. Nothing that's inside the sea is not covered. Right? Amen. That if you go to the ocean, everything inside of the ocean is covered with water. The Bible speaks about a day that the earth shall be covered with that knowledge of God's glory. That every part of the earth will be filled with the glory or the knowledge of the glory of God. See, many times you want to see God's glory, but before you get God's glory, you got to get the knowledge of His glory. You, gotta learn it. you see, because if you don't know the knowledge of His glory, you won't recognize it when it shows up. That's right. This is why some of us don't understand why some of us are on the floor laying down. Like, what are you doing, buddy? Get up. Go crease up your pants, amen. Why? Because we don't understand the knowledge behind the act. You see, but when you understand, so that, that thing rolls off on you, amen. The brothers start jumping, I'll start jumping with them because I understand and I know exactly what's happening. You see, but the Bible says there'll be a day where that knowledge of God's glory shall cover the whole earth. So now as believers, that's a hope, that's one hope in the Bible that we can pray for and look forward to that there'll be a day where the whole earth is filled with that knowledge. You see, that knowledge is not just information. In the, in the Hebrew, it's the word yada. And that word yada, what it means is knowledge by experience. That means that there'll be a group of people that will not only uh, uh, hear about God's glory, but there'll be a people that will actually experience it. I just want, I'm tired of hearing about God. I want Him to be real in my life. I want Him to be walking with me. I want to go to a restaurant and tell the waiter, put a, if it's me and my wife, I'll tell put three chairs. Yeah, come on. If it's me and my wife and the Holy Ghost, come on somebody. And I'm going to order up a plate. And I'm going to order up a water. Because, and the waiter's going to come up to me and say, are you still waiting for this person? I'm saying, no, he's already there. <laughs> because the reality of who God is in my life is so real that naturally it's starting to manifest. You see, but many of us will get comfortable and stuck in what we think and what we believe. And you say, Pastor, you don't want to do all that. You don't know how to order the Holy Ghost water and food. Come on, you know to, that's too crazy. You're just going to waste your money. You don't know how to do with that. Why? Because we don't understand. What if I chose for that to be an expression of my faith? In my season, where I'm like, God, I want you to be real. So I start making these fake actions where he's becoming real. That everywhere I go, I had an extra person. In the first stage of my walk with the Lord, I would literally be at work and I'll talk to a couple of co-workers and literally down to hell. Wow. Like, brother, you gotta get right, you can go to hell. You still smoking on that green, you can go to hell, brother, you better get delivered. And I'll sit there and I'll down to hell. And then I remember, I'll never forget someone that didn't even go to church. She, she sat next to me, she was hearing my conversation, I was like, like brother, I don't know how it's gonna be, brother, but you wanna be there. And I remember she, she, she looked at me and said, hey, uh, I don't think God needs you to fight his battles. Wow. I was like, God, if God wants to reveal himself to him, he will on his own time. I said, she's like, who are you to damn people to hell? And I looked at the, you see, because y'all see the, y'all see it develop, Pastor George, amen? Y'all just see where, where God put, where, where I was put on blast because I was doing it wrong. And imagine trying to share the gospel with someone, someone that doesn't even go to church and says, hey, brother, I don't think that's how you do it. You damn them to hell, you ain't bringing them to church. Like, think about how embarrassing and how, how, how little you'll feel. Yes. But I remember I said, you know what? Only a fool despises correction. So I sat there and said, you know what, sister? I received that. Yeah. And I remember from that moment on, I made a vow to myself that I will never talk about God unless I'm living it. Amen. That there's going to be a time that the body of Christ is entering to where knowing Him, it's going to open up in the spirit more. Amen. 
So we're not just coming to church and we're lifting up our hands and we're going with the flow, but we get to this place where we see who God is. And when I say who he is, because I know many times where I sat down and, and I heard ministers say, oh, God spoke to me or the Lord showed me this. I would literally think that the cloud of heaven came in the room and God came with a thunder sword and he came demonstrating himself in a crazy way. But I didn't realize that when God began to speak to me, he began to show me impressions in ways that I never thought he would show me. So many, like I say, there's going to be a time where the body of Christ is going to see God clearly. I'm not saying you're going to see angels flying in the air. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that your understanding of God when you're singing the song, it's going to be so clear that it's going to bring you to your knees. Amen. That it's, going to, it's going to bring you to this intimate place where it's you and him and him, and it doesn't matter who's in the room. Amen. This is why sometimes when we question a worship service and we say it's too long, it's because you're not in it. Amen. Amen. If worship's too long for you, you're not in it. Amen. Because when you're in it, time's not a factor. Amen. Amen. You see, because the reality is that something's happening in that moment with me and Jesus. And I don't want it to stop. Amen. But if we want worship to finish, it's because we've already checked out in that moment. Amen. You see, so there's a time that I believe in this next season as a church, as a body of Christ, that God's going to bring this clarity of who He is. And what he's going to begin to show so that we don't seem out of an empty place. Mm -hmm. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach our, of ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, uh, your bond servants, for Jesus' sake, for it is the God who commanded light to shine in, out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're going to want to take me out to eat when you get this revelation. Hey, hey. See, so we see that the writer is Apostle Paul and he's writing to the, to the Corinthian church. And this is a church that is living in God's will, that is going after God. And they got some issues and he's correcting them, but he brings them to this place. And, 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 and I love this specific text because when we read uh, 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 the, the, the stories or, or, or the written uh, writings of Paul, when we read his writings, he's always correcting the church. But what we don't understand is that Paul came from a dark place. Amen. Paul came from a dark place where he killed Christians. Yes. And one season he was killing Christians, and in the next season he was pulling them out of the hell. Come on. See, statistically, that what was once 80% Christianity or had some type of faith, now we see that 70% don't have nothing. They just don't believe in anything, statistically. But I'm going to buy that in Jesus' name, amen. That faith is rising and people are coming alive and carrying God's truth. Amen. But you see, we get this. It says, to those that do not believe, the gospel are perishing. And they're blinded, they're veiled, they're covered. Or in other words, to hinder in knowledge. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that, 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 that we're not destroyed by what we know. Come on. But we're destroyed by the lack of knowledge. That it's not what we don't know that's killing us. Come on. Mm. But I want to read this for you real quick. In that Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, you know how to go there says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But Pastor Matthew, that word destroy is not just to be destructive. It means to be cut away. So in other words, my people cut themselves away because they don't want to receive my knowledge of who I am in their life. It's what we don't receive of God that's making us suffer in our present times. The problems that we face is, like, think about it, the things that we're facing that's hard for us to live out for God is because we don't know how we're going to get out of it. We don't know how God's going to work it out. We're believing for a miracle, but we don't know when the miracle's going to come or how it's going to come. So now we're depressed and broken. We're praying for our marriage, but we don't know how God's going to do something in the man of God or in the woman of God. And so we just stay depressed and we stay blacked out. We, we just cut that truth off. And now we just want to live like we're living by ourselves. 
Can't even believe for your children. Can't even believe for the church. So are you really a believer? Because the word to be a believer means that you're believing. And the Bible says faith without works is. So if you ain't working out your faith, you got some dead faith. So in reality, you ain't really a believer. If the shoe fits, slide it on. Why? Because we gotta get to this place where we understand if I'm gonna believe, I'm gonna believe no matter what I gotta go through. Even if I'm confused, I'm gonna take it to God till that confusion leaves. Even I'm depressed, I'm gonna take it to God till that depression leaves my life. Even if my family's broken, I'm gonna take it to God until my, my family is healed. And so we see that the reality is is that that knowledge of God that Hosea 4 6, 4, 6 is saying it's the same word that we see in Habakkuk. Amen. Yada. So in other words, my people are cut off from <laughs> what they're not experiencing in me. <laughs> what we're not experiencing in God is what's cutting us off from that's seeing good. and moving our life. That's good. So that's why we can't go into deep prayer. Because we're already cut off. You can't fast. You can't pray. You can't worship that long. Why? Because we're already cut off. Because we're not pushing ourselves to experience God's goodness in our secret place. Yeah. In moments of prayer, moments of worship. See, it's good to get filled here, but are you getting filled Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Come on! See, the devil might be the God of this age, but my God is the God of all ages. Yeah. Uh, you see, y'all got a little scared right there. Where's Pastor George going with this? Listen to me. The God of this age means up to space and time. That the enemy has been given power and authority because of what happened in the garden. Yeah. Okay? Now there's this space and this time where the enemy is ruling. The Bible says that he's the prince of the air. So now he's ruling, right? And like, let's be real. This is Bible. The, the, look at your neighbor. 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 The devil got some power. The but there's a greater power in you. Yeah. Yeah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. of time. What do I mean? Theologians believe that there's six different ages in all of uh, this time that we're living on earth. That there was a first age where he introduced a man to the earth and then it goes on to six ages and the six ages where we see Christ coming back. But then there's also theologians believe that there was a, 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 a Abraham was an age and they call it the Abrahamic age and we got Noah was an age and that was the Noahic age yeah. and that Moses was an age and he was called the Mosaic age and each age something in a different part of God was being revealed. And what am I saying? That there is different spaces of time, different categories, right? So we got um, the Adam age. Then we got the Noah age. And then we got the um, we got the Abraham age, right? And then from the Abraham age, it goes on to Moses and it just keeps on going, right? But the reality is, is that each age, something was working. Amen. A power, a spirit was working. See, in, in, in Adam's age, they didn't have the law. They had the law in their heart. Amen. They were convicted by a book. They were convicted by the spirit. Amen. Then you go to Moses' age. They had the law. They were convicted by the spirit. They were convicted by the by the law. See, every age something was given. So in that time, they had to live according to what was happening in that time. Yeah. Because God's power is not just this age. He's the God of every single age. And the same power that was given to Christ is the same power that's been given to you. Yeah. That's why he said you have power to what? To, 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 to step on scorpions and serpents. Come on. He, he told John, what did he tell Joshua? That everywhere you step, I will give to you. In other words, I will give you power over that ground. You see, the reality is, is that some things have not been overtaken because we haven't stepped in it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to rewrite the resume. When they ask you, why do you want to work here? Because I want to be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Come on. Because if I get this job, your finances are about to go on. Why? Because I carry God's favor over my life. We have a treasure. Not they. We 
have a treasure. Not them. So when someone makes fun of your faith, we not them. If someone doesn't agree with you, we have a treasure. When someone doesn't want to believe in you, we not them. It says we have this treasure. See, when you study Paul's life, you see this. He came out of darkness and he stepped into the light. But he was given something amongst all the other apostles that wasn't given. And it was the knowledge of God's glory. Amen. He knew something about God's glory that many did not know at that time. He was the first one expressing that dimension of revelation about God's glory. What God was doing inside of Peter, Paul said earlier. The Bible, the Lord believe that when Paul got saved, that he went from seven to 14 years just sitting. He didn't even preach a message. And the only, the only ones preaching at that time were Peter and most of the other, some of the other apostles that were walking. That's what he said, I consider myself the least. And I know we read that like, man, Paul was humble. No. It's like his journey taught him naturally that he was the least. He always boasted in God. Why? Because out of all, amongst all the apostles, it was a sign to his life to be given the greatest revelation that we can ever have. Amen. The I'm going to read this Bible from the beginning to the end. And I got to the Leviticus, brother, and I closed my Bible. <laughs> y'all, maybe y'all went through, y'all, y'all just lift up your hands, you're like, I've been down there all my life. I did it. Close that Bible up. I heard the Bible say, God, I don't understand this word. I'll never forget, I want to go to Pastor Joe, like, Pastor, I want to go to, to Bible school. Like, Pastor, Spirit for should send us to Bible school. That we should go to Bible school. Like, we gotta learn the like, man, we need Bible school, man. Like, like we can understand so much if we go to Bible school. And Pastor said, no, well, you're gonna go back to your room and you're gonna ask the Spirit to reveal something to you, and you're not gonna walk out until you get something. I said, all right, I'll never go back, and I would open up my Bible. I still wouldn't get nothing. But then there was a season in my life where I would read and nothing would happen, but there was a season, this turning point. Where I would open up Isaiah, and when he said, when he, in that passage where he says that you will go to the fire and you will not be burned, you will, you will go through the waters and you will not be drowned. In that, in that split second, I remember putting myself in that verse, and I began to get some understanding of God in my life. That no matter what I was going to go through, that 